Hi, I'm Manny Hosworth. I'm U.S. Technical Manager with Leo Vinci USA. Today we're going to be putting our uh, new electronics box, the FAST system, on a ZX10 2011. And uh, we'll basically walk you through it, get it installed, show you what it does, how it goes on, and, and put it on the dyno. So when you get the box, you open it up. First thing you'll see is there's the blue box here, which is the FAST unit, the ECU unit, we call it. Underneath, you'll have all the included things like the harness, there's a mounting kit, the cable to communicate with it through USB. There's a CD with uh, software and installation instructions, everything you need on there. You just kind of pull the box out there, you can see it. Everything you need is included right here to get the installation done. You just go ahead and mount the harness, route it through the bike, plug it into the injectors, and you're ready to go. So the first step is usually want to take off the passenger seat, take off the rider seat, usually remove the tank. You don't always have to, you can prop it up, but uh, I usually just like to remove it. It gives you more space to work. The next step, once you have the tank off the bike, is to lay the harness down, kind of route it where it's going to go. On this particular model, it routes along the right side of the motorcycle and then up towards the front and up to the lower injectors. The next step is to plug it into the lower injectors, not the upper injectors. It's an important step to make sure you don't forget. On some models, you might go from left to right. In this particular one, we're going from right to left, so it's important to pay attention to that when you're mounting the fast unit, as you'll end up installing it backwards. When you hear that click go in, you should have a nice positive connection. If you don't, make sure you have the connectors pushed in all the way. If you don't have them pushed in all the way, they could back out. Once you've got the injectors plugged in, the next step is to plug in the crankshaft position sensor. On this particular model, it's hidden behind a little bracket. So you have to undo the bracket, look behind it, get that connector unplugged and ours plugged in line with it. So next step is to attach the TPS signal wire to the lower throttle blade TPS, throttle position sensor. You want to make sure you attach it to the lower throttle position sensor, not the upper, as this bike has two, and we use the lower to, to throttle position reference signal for our fast ECU. So what you do is you come in usually with a flat blade, like a longer flat blade makes it a lot easier. You push the retainer on the sensor, pop it off, attach the tap to the signal wire, then install the whole thing back onto the sensor. It goes around the signal wire like this, you take the red piece with the pointy part sticking out, screws into that. Not too tight, but just snug it up like that, and that's it. You're going to connect the yellow wire from the fast harness to the posi-lock tap here onto the signal wire. I like to go ahead and strip them first. It gives you a way to connect it into the posi-lock. I just take my strippers like this. Just a little piece at the end like that is all you need. You put this end of the yellow wire into the other end of the lock, of the posi lock, just like that. Push it down a little bit, then go ahead and snug it down, like that, and check it to make sure it's in. So now that I've got the tap installed, I want to route this connector back under where it came from and connect it to that lower TPS, the same way we removed it from. Now that we've got it all plugged in and installed, I usually like to put a few zip ties on the harness, make sure it's nice and tidy, keep it away from the shock, for example, on this motorcycle. And just make sure it's safe and not gonna rub against anything. One of the last things we're gonna do is we just need to attach the negative lead to the negative side of the battery. It's a ground, not a positive, so it needs to go on the negative side of the battery, make sure of that. And finally, we're gonna mount the box on top of the battery on this particular model, then plug the harness in and we're done. So now we're going to go ahead and select the map that we want to load into this particular bike. The fast unit is preloaded to the three maps. If for some reason your exact combination is not preloaded, you can always use the software to load the appropriate map for your setup. We have maps that are already made for all US bikes for all of our exhaust systems. The fast unit has a plug that sits over the USB communication plug. You would remove that plug, install the USB cable that's included in the kit, and then you can communicate with the unit. So what I'm going to do next is I open the included software. I can open the maps, go into the directory here, select the map that suits what we have loaded on this bike. You can see here on the right the notes, we have map position one, map position two, and map position three. On this particular bike, we have the GP Pro slip-on with no insert, the Catalin pipe, stock ECU. So you can see we would select map two, hit the right button. You'll see the status bar at the bottom right of the screen. 
and then a message showing that the map is loaded. If you're not sending a map and just using the maps already included, you can simply select the map position that you want. If you're using a particular map and you want to look and you want to use a particular map position, you simply click at the top of the screen where it says switch on the position you want to use. So for example, on this bike, I'm using position two. I click on position two. Position two is now highlighted. It synchronizes with the box and that's all I need to do. I can unplug the cable at that point and there's nothing else necessary in the software. So we just showed you one of the two ways to select maps on the FastBox. You can use your laptop or we have an optional map switch that you can mount on the bike and use to select through the three different positions. This is it here. You install it on the bike, mounts on the clutch perch, you have a little carbon fiber bracket and a button, and then it has an LED display with colors, so it's red, green, orange for one, two, and three respectively. We're going to get it installed, route it down, connect it to the box, and then show you how to select maps using your switch on the fly. On this bike, we're going to mount it on the top bolt in the clutch perch. So we're going to undo the bolt, put it through the bracket, mount it, rotate it over so that's kind of within your thumb range so it's easy to get to while you're on the bike and then we're set. When I'm routing the map switch, I like to go through the fork tube here and back around. You always want to make sure you're not in a situation where you're going to pinch it, it's going to get stuck in the clutch lever, chop the thing. You want to make sure it's free from any moving parts and that it gives the headstock room to rotate. So this is the LED indicator light showing what map position you're in. It goes red, green, and orange indicating map one, two, or three. On this bike, we're going to go ahead and install it here keep it in an easy view of the rider, and then we use the included dual-sided tape to attach it down to the dash. Now that we've got the switch mounted to the handlebars, the harness router back towards the fast box, we're going to plug the map switch into the fast harness. So you just remove the waterproof plug that's in the harness now and put the map switch in its place. Once you have the map switch connected to the fast harness, the LED light's now functional. So once you turn the key on, you're going to have a color position in that little LED light in there. We have red, green, orange, and that's corresponding to map one, two, and three. We're going to install the optional fast shift product that allows us to do full throttle upshifts without using the clutch. What you have to do is install this sensor and a new rod in place of your current rod. The easiest way to install a quick shift sensor is to make sure that the quick shift sensor and the rod combined together are the same length as your stock rod that you're removing. In this instance on the ZX-10, you can see we've got our sensor, our M6 to M6 shift rod. We come up a little bit shorter than the stock rod. What you would normally do is cut an extension piece off another rod, use a coupler like this, and add it to the end. When we do that, then we end up a little bit long. So, to make it everything work out right, I'm going to end up cutting two notches off of the original rod. Then I can add my coupler, just like so, remove these, and it comes up exactly the same. So now I've shortened that original M6 rod by two notches so we can add our coupler extension. So now you reinstall the rod with the shift sensor on it, lock down the jam nuts, make sure it's at your preferred uh, height for your foot position, make sure the knuckles down there nice and tight and ready to route the harness through. So on our shift sensor, the sensor and the harness are two separate pieces. This allows for easier sensor changes if you need to in the event of a crash or to change switch positions. What we're going to do next is route the harness through, then connect this to the sensor. So once you get the harness routed up through, zip tied, make sure it's out of the way, not pinched by anything. You remove this plug here from the fast box from the six pin connector. Plug that shift harness straight into it and that's it, all done. So at this point, we've got everything installed, plugged in, tanks back on, everything's bolted back up. You'd start the bike, make sure it's running, no error codes, make sure, you, and if you do have an error code, you haven't left on something unplugged, like an intake temp sensor, injector, something like that. But now's the time to fire it up and, and check everything over. So a common question you might have is, what does the fast box do? Why would I put it on my bike and do I need it? And I think the best way to explain it, it would be that the bike will run without it, but it will run better with it. Mainly what you'll see is not so much a peak power gain or a, you know, a 10 horsepower increase. Mainly what you'll see is a throttle response, crisper throttle, partial throttle gains is usually where you see the most gains. On this particular bike, I've got a Dynograph up a 15% throttle. And you can see that with the stock map, the bike becomes very lean at higher RPM. Basically, by 9,000, it, it basically stops running. With the fast box, we can add fuel there, it, fix the fuel curve, 
so that it's got fuel where it needs it. It doesn't have a big lean spot and it doesn't fall on its face. So the bike and then will carry out all the way basically to redline. 